Hi and welcome. Let's make a security camera in Unreal Engine which can capture images and show them on a screen. I am using a level downloaded from Unreal Marketplace. This one, Spaceship Interior Environment Set. It doesn't really matter what level you, you use. I just loaded this one because it looks cool. So, I have the level and I have two meshes. This is one of the meshes and this is the other mesh. So this is the camera body, this is the camera base. If I drag the mesh to the level, you can see this is how it looks. Okay, I'll put a link in the description for you to be able to download these models. Uh, I also have a few textures here. I'll use them later. Okay, so what we want is the camera to be able to capture images and project those images onto a material, a screen in this case. And we also want the cameras to move. So, to start, let's create a blueprint for the camera. Right-click, Blueprint Class Actor. And I'm going to call it Camera BP. Open the blueprint. So, let's add a component. Static Mesh. Because we want to be able to open both meshes inside the blueprint. So the first one it's cam body. On the right side you have to select the static mesh. So this is the first mesh. Now we have to add the second mesh but first select the root so you have cam body and you have default scene root. First select the root and then add another static mesh. We have to do this because if we don't, the, the second mesh will be parented to the first mesh. You could also do that and then unparent it, but this way it's easier. So cam base. Now, cam base on the details here, let's select the second mesh, cam base. Okay, so we have both meshes here. Now, next step. We have to position this object correctly. Because what we want is this part of the camera to be rotating like this, and this part has to remain static on the wall. So we move this part to the front. Let me just change this. This is too fast. Okay, it's, it's correct now. So now every time we rotate the camera, it will make this kind of movement. So the camera is correct now, but in order to capture an image, we must add another component. Uh, we have to add a new component parented to this object, so that it rotates with this object. So first select the camera body, and then add a component. Search for scene capture component 2D and now you can see that you you have a camera icon here since this is too big let's scale it down so we just created the component and we are going to scale it down so on scale let's make it 0 0.1 
now move it to the front of the mesh and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay, let's move it here to the front, somewhere around here. This is the component that will capture the images. So now you can see that it's parented. If I rotate this mesh, the scene capture will rotate along with it. And that is precisely what we want. So this is in place. Let's compile the blueprint. And now the blueprint is ready to capture images. But we still have to make a few additional steps. Now we need to create a material. Because first we capture the image and then we send the image to a material for it to be able to be shown on an object. So the material will include the image, the captured image. So right click, material, and I'm going to call it screen mat. This will be the material of the screen, of the TV screen, of the monitor, anything you want. So double click the material. And the material is empty for now. There is not much going on here. Let's just prepare the material and change the shading model to unlit. We are doing this because we don't need the other um, material properties. We just want the emissive color. So let's save. We have a material. And now we can create the screen. I don't have a model for a screen right here, but we can use a default Unreal Engine plane. Of course, it would look better if you had model a screen uh, with more details, but let's just use a plane. So this is the plane. I'm going to move it up. Rotate the plane 90 degrees. Move it closer to one of the walls. Like it was a screen on the wall, for instance. Okay, here it is, a screen on the wall. Now let's create a material instance. Uh, I always create material instances uh, for objects. It would work uh, with the base material, but uh, it's good practice to create material instances. So let's create a material instance and apply the instance to the screen, to the plane. Okay, now we have a screen. We can drag the blueprint to the level. And let me just position the camera somewhere. 90 degrees. So the camera will be near the, the screen. Okay, near, near the wall. Okay, right here. So the camera is on the wall. The screen is over here, but there is no image yet. So there's one additional step we have to take. We have to create a special kind of texture called a render target. So right click, materials and textures, 
and Render Target. So right click, Materials and Textures, Render Target. And I'm going to call it RT. Now I'm going to move this texture to the material. So drag it to the material we have just created for the screen and connect the texture to the emiss emissive slot and save. So let me just uh, um, let me just explain this once again. We have created a special texture. We have inserted the texture in the material to the emissive color. So once this texture becomes an image, because right now it's just black, the texture will be emissive and will be shown on the surface of this plane. Now we just have to tell this component to capture the information to that specific texture. So let's go back inside the blueprint, select the scene capture component 2D, and here on the right side in scene capture, let's point it to the RT render target we have just created. So now we are saying that the scene capture component 2D must capture the information to this specific texture. And now compile. Okay, you can already see the image showing here on the screen. It's rotated, so let's correct this. Okay, I think it's the other way around. So as you can see, the camera is already doing something. Let's move the camera around. You can see that the image is updating. And if I rotate the camera, let me just turn on snapping. If I rotate the camera, I can see the image updating in real time. If I zoom in here, I can see that this image is very low resolution. And this aspect ratio is not uh, the greatest one, it's square. Usually screens aren't square. So let's change these things. First of all, let's change the aspect ratio of the plane. Right now it's square, but let's make it 16 by 9, like most of TVs nowadays. So scale in X, 1.6. And here, let's make it 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Okay, like this. 1.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.9. Next, we have to change the image itself, because right now you can see that it's stretched horizontally. So let's go to the render target, double click the render, the render target here, and here it is, you can see it right now, but Look at the resolution, 256 by 256. Let's make this full HD. So this is full HD resolution. Let's save. Now it looks much better. Higher resolution, correct aspect ratio. Of course, this may impact performance a bit. You have to be careful with it. It's still updating. 
everything seems fine. So the next step will be giving the camera some movement. I don't want the camera to be static, I want it to rotate over time. So let's go to the blueprint again. Okay, sometimes this happens. Um, this is giving me an error. Let's just go here to the sampler type and change this to linear color. I don't know why this happens. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So if it does, it gives you a warning down here and you have to change the sampler type. So let's go to the blueprint. Inside the blueprint, event graph. I'm going to delete all of this and add an event begin play. Event begin play, I know I just deleted because I already had an event begin play, but I want to start fresh. So event begin play. And now I want to add a timeline. So drag this, add timeline, and I'm going to call it camera movement. Let's double click the timeline. It doesn't have any track. So let's add a float track. Uh, and I'm going to call it rotation. I want the whole animation to last uh, about uh, 20 seconds. So let's make the length 20. 20 here. I want it to loop, so the animation must loop, otherwise the camera would move only once and stop. So loop. And now we have to look at this um, like it was the degrees of rotation. So I want to input the degrees. And I'm going to do that with keyframes. So shift and click to add a keyframe. So shift and click. This will be the last keyframe, for instance. So the time for this keyframe, let's make it uh, 17 seconds. Let's zoom to fit. The value here will be zero. I'm going to explain uh, why in just a while. So here, another keyframe. We're going to start at three seconds, for instance. Expand horizontally. So this will be our first keyframe, our last keyframe. The first one at time three, value zero. The last one, time 17 seconds, value zero. And now in between, I am going to make the movement. So this means that the camera, when the animation starts, the camera has zero rotation. And when it ends, it ends with zero rotation because this animation must loop. When it reaches this point, it starts again. So if I have a value, a high value here, uh, imagine this would be 20 degrees. At the end of animation, the animation, the camera would jump suddenly to zero degrees. That's why we want the first and last keyframes to be zero. Now I'm going to add another keyframe. For instance, at six seconds. And I want the camera to rotate to one of the, the sides for 45 degrees. In this case, minus 45 degrees. So minus 45. Let's click this arrow to expand vertically. So zero minus 45 and it goes back to zero, but I want it to stay at minus 45 for a few seconds. 
So another keyframe. The value must be minus 45 again. Uh, let's make this um, another value like 10 seconds. Maybe it's too much. 8 seconds. So from 6 to 8 seconds, the camera will be still at minus 45 degrees. Now the camera must then turn to the other side. So another keyframe uh, at uh, 12 seconds. And I want to make it positive 45. So let's fit again on the arrow. And the same thing for this side. So 14 seconds, 45 degrees. So you can, you can already see what the camera is going to do. It's going to start at zero degrees, start turning left until minus 45 degrees, stay in the same position for two seconds, start rotating to the other side, to the right side, 45 degrees to the right side, stay on the right side for two seconds and go back to zero degrees. One more thing, um, I don't want the camera to be moving and then suddenly stop. We have a, a linear um, animation here. Let's select all of the frames, right click on top of one keyframe and select auto. So this softens the curves. But there's a problem here, because if I leave it like this, the camera will never be completely still. It will reach minus 45 and it will start rotating slowly, slowly, but still always rotating. So these two keyframes, right click and flatten. It still has the curve, but this part is flat. Same here, right click and flatten. And now everything is smooth, everything is fine. So compile. Now there's one more step we must take. We have made the timeline, so we have the values for the rotation. These values here, 0, minus 45, plus 45, 0, will be coming out of this node here, of this pin, sorry. So we must feed this into something. So start by dragging the camera body mesh here, click the camera body mesh and drag it to the event graph. Now from this pin here, drag it again drop and start searching for set relative rotation set relative rotation here this means that we want to set the rotation of the camera body that's why we first dragged the camera body here and only then we uh, inserted this node. So let's drag this here. We must connect everything in order to keep uh, things going, thing, things playing. Now we have to insert this value here on this node, but you can't see really see a way to insert it. So first we have to go here with the cursor, right click, and split struct pin. Now you have green pin here and green pin here. <clears throat> Since we want the rotation in the vertical axis, Z, we must connect the rotation here to the new rotation in Z. And 
that's it. Compile. Let's go back to the level and see if everything's working. Right now the camera is not moving because we haven't pressed play yet. So let's press play. Okay, I'm pressing play. And you can see the camera is rotating and the image is moving. I'm going to make this full screen. So the camera is rotating, the screen is updating, the camera stopped for a while, it's rotating again to one of the sides, so this is minus 45, it's going to positive 45 now, stopping for two seconds and going back to zero. I moved the camera and the screen to a new position. And let's look at the screen. Right now it looks uh, nice, but maybe too perfect. This material, uh, it looks like just an image, not very interesting. So let's make things interesting. Let's change the material. So, like I said before, this is a very, very basic material, unlit with a single texture in the emissive color. So I have two other textures here, these gradient and these screen lines. So let's grab both of those, drag them to the material, drop them, and let's uh, try to make something more interesting, like a low quality screen. So first I'm going to start by mixing this texture. So this is the, the texture. Mix this with this. Let's try with the overlay. So right click, blend overlay. This is the base, this is the blend. Let's see how it looks. Let me see in our level. Okay, it looks interesting, somewhat interesting. Maybe this is more interesting, Add instead of blend overlay. Let me try this. Okay, this is too strong. Let me multiply this with something to make it darker. So for instance with 0 0.2 0 0.2 too much, still too much, okay, I think it's it looks best like this, so now you have these um, lighter lines going on, maybe even less, 0 0.005, okay, it looks nice now. Okay, I think this effect is better. Now let's add some kind of interference. Let's go back to the material and use this second texture. So I'm, ju I'm just going to select all of these, press C, and call this texture with lines. Now this is the gradient, the interference. I'm going to, let's try, let's try another blending low, uh, mode, uh, soft uh, light, soft light, let's try it. 
I'm going to blend all of these with this. So this is the base. This is the blend. Let's save and see what it looks like. Okay, so I have this center part here. It looks nice, but not very interesting still. So let's make the gradient move. Let's create a banner. Banner. Connect the banner to the UVs. And we want the banner to pan the gradient vertically. So we want the speed to be in Y. So minus 0 0.2. Okay, minus 0 0.2, it's moving. You can see in the preview here, it's moving. Save, let's see the effect. Okay, I think it looks nice. If you want to make it move faster, it's just a matter of increasing this value, minus 0 0.4. Later we can create a parameter for this. Okay, now it's moving faster. Now there's still more we can do. Press C here. This is the interference. We are blending here. Now let's make the screen flicker just a bit. We can make that uh, with another add node. So let's add. The shortcut is A, A and click. This will come here. This will come here. Now we must add something over time. For instance, we can have a sign. Sign. This node will give us um, a changing value over time. It's a sign curve. It, go, it goes from minus one to positive one and back to minus one. So it's just a sine wave. Let's add a time. Right click time here, connect time to sign. Now we should have the sign updating, as you can see. If you don't see your notes updating in real time, uh, turn on live notes and live update. So click here and here to see everything updating in real time. So this is the first sign. So let's try and see how it looks. We are adding this. Okay, it's, it's too strong. It's obviously too strong. So we can try to multiply this with some kind of small value. So here you, you have two options. When you, when you multiply something, you can either create a constant and change the value of the constant, or you can select the multiply and change the second value. You will multiply A with B, and this is the value of B. But I'm just going to create a constant. And the value of the constant will be very low, something like 0 0.1. Let's try it. Okay, it's too much. I think it's too much. Okay, I see I've made a mistake because I am adding, but the sign starts at minus 1. So... If I add minus one here, sometimes this will go completely black. 
I forgot about that. So let's make the sign always positive. And how do we do that? We add one. So I am adding one. And every time the sign is minus one, if I add 1, it becomes 0. So now the sign never goes to negative values. But I don't want the sign to be over 1. So next, I divide by 2. So divide by 2. By default, it's already dividing by 2, but to make things more clear, I'm going to connect this and change the value to 2. So right now the sign is being added to 1 and divided by 2. Add isn't giving me the effect I want. So let's just get rid of add. Right click and let's try soft light. This is the base, this is the blend, result to emissive color. Okay, now it looks better. So the image, you can see the intensity of the image is changing. So this is exactly what I want. Maybe the intensity of the flicker is not very noticeable. So let's change this value to 0 0.3. See the effect. Okay, now the flicker is more intense. You can see the image is changing intensity over time. So this is my first flicker. So this makes the image flicker, but the flicker is too constant. Select all of this, control C, move it down here, control V, so co copy paste. Now we can combine this flicker with this flicker, this will be flicker 2. And the time will be different, or the sign will be different, the period of the sign. For instance, 0 0.6, let's try a different period. So this is a quicker, a faster sign. This is a slower one, and we can combine the two to give a more interesting result. Maybe even faster, 0 0.4. Okay, now let's combine both of these flickers and afterwards connect to this blend soft light. So I'm going to use a max node. A max means that only the higher value goes through, the higher of the two. So this multiply and this multiply go into the max. And let's see how it looks. Okay, now we have a more random flicker. I can increase the intensity because the effect is not very noticeable. Let's make both of the flickers 0 0.8. Okay, now you can see a lot more flickering. Let's see how it looks in the level. It's always important to check the level. Okay, you can see that there is a lot of flicker going on. Now let's go back to the material. And what about the color of the texture itself? We can change the color to make it look even cooler. So let's add a color, 3. 
I want this color to be something like this, blue. And now we can make another node. Let's try overlay again. Blend overlay. I want to see how it looks. So we are blending a color with our image. Okay, it's, it's a bluish color. Here let's add an S-curve. Right click, S-curve. Now let's connect everything. We are going to increase the contrast with this curve. So let's add a value here to the power. The value should be above 1, so let's try 1.5. Maybe that was too much. 1.92. Okay, let's see how it looks. Okay. I think it looks fine. Let's try and boost the image just a bit. So besides adding the contrast, we are going to multiply the image with a value to boost it. Let's try multiplying by 3. See how it looks. Okay. Multiply by 10. Okay, let's see how it looks inside the level. I think it looks nice. Let me play. Let's find the screen. Where's the screen? It's here. So there's the screen. The camera is moving. Okay, I think it looks nice. Let's wait for the camera. Okay, rotating again. I think it looks nice. One thing you may want to do is to have several cameras and several screens. So I'm going to start by duplicating this camera and move the camera to another room. Place it on this wall or up there. So this is our second camera. And now let's let's also make a second screen. So as you can see right now, both screens are showing the same camera. In this case, not this, but they are showing this camera. They are showing this room with all the orange pipes. But we want two different images. So we want one screen to show the image from one camera and the other screen showing the image of the other camera. So this is fairly simple. We just have to specify a new render target. So we already have a render target being used we must create another. So you can just duplicate this one. So control W to duplicate. This will be RT1. And this camera here, we are going to the properties of the camera. And here in components, let's go to the scene capture component 2D and in scene capture, texture target, change the RT texture to RT1. So now this camera is capturing 
to RT1 and this other camera is capturing to RT. Now it's just a matter of changing the texture on the material itself. So right now both screens have the same material. So let's duplicate the instance. So this is the material of both screens. Let's duplicate the instance. Let's add the material to this screen. So right now this is instance 1 and this is our first instance. So right now these are two different instances. Let's go to instance 1. Okay, and you see that you don't have uh, a parameter you can change in the instance. So we have to go back to the base material and say that this texture must be a parameter. So click the texture. So this is the screen capture. Right click and convert to parameter. I'm going to call it render target. The name doesn't matter. Save. Now we can go to the instance, activate render target and select the other render target. So since this is a parameter, we can change it for each instance. Each instance can have a different texture. So now everything's working. Let's play. Look at the screens. The screen on the left is showing what the camera is capturing on the other room. And the screen on the right is the, this camera here right in front of us. So it's working fine. It's working great. Right now, both cameras are moving at the same time. Which means both screens are moving at the same time, like they were synchronized. And that's not very interesting. So let's change things a bit. Let's go to the camera blueprint again. And here on the left side, add a new float variable. So click the plus sign here to add a variable. Call it delay. And change the variable type to float. Here on the right side, float. Okay, so we have the camera movement here on the left side on, uh, in component. Let's drag the camera movement to the event graph here and say get camera movement and then drag from here and search for set play rate. Set play rate. Now let's connect this. And now we are saying that the rotation must happen at a certain play rate. And we want to define that play rate. So let's drag the delay here. Drop it, get delay, connect the delay to new rate, on the right side let's enable instance editable, because we want to make this different for each instance. Now compile. Select the first camera blueprint. I'm going to select this one in my case. And here on the right side, you will see a new parameter, a delay, which is the parameter we have just created. 
let's make this delay 0 0.8 so it's less than 1 I'm making the camera move slower let's go to the other camera here on the other room select the camera and the delay let's make it 1.2 so this camera will be a bit faster let's save let's play and see if all of this is working okay now you can see that the cameras are moving at different speeds you can see that by the image on the screens so they are not synchronized anymore which looks way better now you can uh, use this to make any number of cameras you want not just two you can make four five ten different cameras using this method and that's it i hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and see you next time